All right, our last video on bones. My goodness. Uh, we've made it all the way down to the foot. And the foot is has to be one of the most interesting engineering marvels of our skeleton. You know, you look you look at these bones and and every bone you start up you start up here with atlas. Right? That bone only has to hold however much your head weighs. And every single segment you move down, the bones have to get more and more robust to hold more and more of your weight, right? And then you look at your femur, and your femur is massive. And then in your tibia and your fibula, I mean, your tibia is a huge bone. It's very strong. Then we get down to our foot, which has to hold all of our body weight. And it's made up of all these little tiny bones with tons of articulations and actually pretty mobile. It just it's it's odd. So anyway, the foot the foot is pretty amazing, um, just technically amazing because it's able to be flexible, mobile, but yet support all of our body weight, and that's just due to the the structure of these bones and the muscles that attach to them. Your foot can alternate between being very rigid uh, to push off, like in a sprint stance, and you need to propel yourself. It can be a very rigid structure, or it can be really flexible as well. So it's pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool structure. So let's go ahead and name all of these tarsal bones of your foot. So uh, tarsals are kind of the counterpart of carpals in your hand, your wrist bones. These are your tarsals, they're in your foot. And it is uh, seven bones here that comprise this sort of hind portion of your foot. And then we just have metatarsals, like we have metacarpals in our hand and phalanges are our toes. So let's just go through them one by one. So here is the talus. Pretty interesting when you look at it by itself. That's the talus. That articulates with the tibia and the fibula. And let's um, let's name some stuff on it here. So this articular, superior articular surface here, it's called the trochlea. And then we have medial and lateral malleolar facets. So these are the sides. So that would be, I actually have to add back in the other bones, but I believe that would be medial. Yep, there's the tibia. And then where um, the lateral malleolar facet articulates with the talus here, we have the lateral malleolar facet. So the whole top portion of the bones and the sides even are facets. Now we have two tubercles on the back here. We have a, a medial and lateral tubercle. So this would be the medial tubercle, and this would be the lateral. Medial and lateral tubercle. And then it's, um, oops, it's not, again, it's not incredibly pronounced on, on the model, unfortunately. But in between those two tubercles, whoa, is a little groove right here called the groove for flexor helicis longus, or groove for FHL. All right, let's look at the head, neck, and body. So the head is, is relatively small. It's just this area here. The neck is behind it. And then the whole rest of this large structure is the body. Head, neck, and body of the talus. And that brings us to the calcaneus, or, or heel. It's the largest tarsal. It's really big, actually. This structure here is the calcaneal tuberosity. It just looks like this big, flat surface on the back there of your calcaneus. You also have medial and lateral tubercles, just like on the um, talus, you had medial and lateral tubercles. But on the calcaneus, they're, they're inferior here. So here's a medial tubercle. In a lateral tubercle, you have some muscles, some foot flexor, some toe flexor, actually, sorry. Uh, muscles attached here as well as some ligaments and some plantar uh, aponeurosis all attaches there. Quite a few structures attached there. 
You then have the structure called the sustentaculum tali or sustentaculum tali. Uh, it sustains the talus, uh, holds up the talus, I guess, is where that name comes from. So uh, here it is right there, sustentaculum tali. Like on the talus that had a groove for FHL, there's also a groove for FHL on the um, uh, calcaneus. So if you imagine a muscle, it's called flexor hallucis longus, coming through here, is it not a good drawing? It's called flexor hallucis because it flexes your big toe. It, there's gonna need to be some grooves along its journey. So this here, it's the groove for FHL on the calcaneus, and here is the groove for FHL on the talus. So the groove's in a couple different places. Uh, we have the fibular trochlea. So if we add back in the fibula, no, they didn't. It, they didn't do the best job here, but they make it look so far apart. But there's a little. There's a little. Um, trochlea here and that's called the fibular trochlea it's this little little nodule on the side of the calcaneus and that is it for the calcaneus so let's look at the navicular so the navicular is an interesting bone it articulates with the head of the talus there's the talus here's the navicular there's really only one thing on the navicular we talk about and that's the navicular tuberosity you can feel that on the inside of your foot. It's usually pretty tender to the touch for some reason. And it's right here, navicular tuberosity. All right, so let's look at the cuboid, which is right here, it's lateral. And then we have three cuneiforms, medial, intermediate, and lateral. Or you can call them cuneiform 1, cuneiform 2, and cuneiform 3. And that's it for the tarsals. Uh, seven very interesting bones. Let's move on to the metatarsals. All right, so our metatarsals are labeled the same way as our metacarpals. We start from our, our thumb of the foot, our big toe, and we move laterally. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like the metacarpals, the metatarsals have a base, a shaft, and a head. So if I tagged this structure right here, right there where that X is, oh, it's an A, sorry. Um, you would say that this is the head of metatarsal four. All right, and our phalanges are almost identical to the way we do them in our hand. So it's still one, two, three, four, five. Proximal, middle, distal. And there's no middle in the big toe. So this would be um, proximal phalanx one, distal phalanx two. This would be middle phalanx three. This would be proximal phalanx two. So you get the idea, one, two, three, four, five and then you just say whether it's proximal middle or distal so guys that's it we covered the tarsals the metatarsals and the phalanges thanks